In this video, we're going to be learning about finding the vertex by hand. So last time we learned about identifying the vertex when given the graph. Now we're just going to be given the equation and we're going to use that to find the vertex. So steps for that is when given a quadratic function, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the steps to find the vertex are first, you're going to find your axis symmetry, in other words, AOS, if we recall, that was x equals opposite of b over 2a. Second, you're going to plug your AOS into your function and solve for your y value. And then three, you're going to write your answer to part one and part two as an ordered pair. Let's go through some examples. So number one, I have f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3. So I'm going to first label what my a, b, and c are. So here, whenever there's not a number in front of x squared, there's really just a 1 there. So that means that a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to 3. So my first step is I want to find the axis of symmetry, my x value. And I know that's opposite of b over 2a. Now I'm going to plug in my values. So I'm going to have a negative. My b value is negative 4 over 2 times a, which is just 1. Well, a negative times a negative, this is just going to be a positive. 2 times 1 is 2. So I get the x is equal to 4 divided by 2, which is just 2. Another way you can think about this for this negative b is really just the opposite sign of b. So since this b was a negative, it's just going to turn into a positive. If this was positive, it would turn into a negative. So I got my first step done. My next step is I want to find my y value. And to find it, I need to plug in 2 for x in all of these. So instead of x squared, I'm going to have 2 squared. Instead of x, I'm going to have 2. Well, 2 squared, that is 4. 4 times 2, I get 8. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3, I get negative 1. So I got my x value, I got my y value. To find my vertex, I'm just going to put those together. So my x term needs to go first, so 2, and then my y, which is negative 1. Now this one also asks me to determine if the function has a maximum or a minimum. So to determine that, again, I need to see whether my a value is positive or negative. Well, my a here is equal to 1, which is greater than 0, and we learned when it's positive that that's going to be a minimum. Okay, let's try another one. So my first step is I want to label my a, b, and c. So here I see that a is equal to negative 2, b is equal to negative 4. There's no c value, so that means that it's really just a plus 0 at the end. So first I need to find my axis symmetry, which is opposite of b over 2a. So when I take the opposite sign of b, my b value is negative 4, so the opposite sign of negative 4 is positive 4 over 2 times a, which is equal to negative 2. 2 times negative 2, I get negative 4. So that means that x is equal to negative 1. So I have the first part of my vertex, negative 1. Now I need to find my y value. And again, to do that, I'm just going to plug in negative 1 everywhere I see an x in my function here. So I have negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 4x. Instead of x, I'll have negative 1. Here we need to be careful. You always want to do the exponent first. So I'm going to do negative 1 squared, which is 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. Negative 2 times 1, I get negative 2. So I get y is equal to 2. So that means that my vertex here is negative 1, comma, 2. 
Now to determine whether this is a maximum or minimum. Well, a is equal to negative 2, which is less than 0. So that means that this is a max. Okay, go ahead and pause the video. I want you to try and do number 3. So the answer you should have gotten here was that the vertex was 1, 3, and I have a minimum. For this last one, I have to do some a little bit of work beforehand. Right now, it's not in this standard form, so I'm going to have to go ahead and actually multiply this out. So remember back in chapter 7, I need to do my double distribution. So x times x, I get x squared. x times negative 2, I get negative 2x. 2 times x, I get plus 2x, and then minus 4. Well, I get x squared plus 0x, which just goes to 0, and then minus 4. And so when I multiply that out, I have 2x squared minus 4. But now when I want to label my a, b, and c, I see I'm missing my b term. I'm missing that x term. And so just like what we did in factoring when I had that issue, I'm just going to put a 0x there. So that means that my b term here is really 0. And so when I'm finding my x value, opposite of b, well, my b is just 0, over 2 times a, which is just 2, it's going to equal 0. And then to find my y value, I'm going to just plug in 0 everywhere. And I see I get negative 4. Here, my a value 2 is greater than 0, so this is going to be a minimum.